and uh, are you ready? Now, uh, maybe I will ask Boyan, can, can you translate please? Maybe from there, you can see it when you speak, uh, they, will, they will hear the Serbian, so, uh, you know, the, uh, Dimitri. No, no, you be there, but they are close to you, so they will hear you. Only true that, that is true. That's it. And uh, let's start with the prayer. So, dear Jesus, thank you for this time. Uh, we just ask you to speak to us today. You know, we, we need you. That's why we came. We are hungry. You know, speak not to our ears only, but also to our hearts. In Jesus' name, Amen. Uh, so I will start with this one thing. Uh, I don't know about you, but the but there is one thing that I have a problem with. You know? And the problem is called waiting. No, no, waiting. Wait, yeah. You know? It's very difficult. You know? Well, the, the, the waiting is also a problem, you know? <laughs> and the waiting for the wedding is a problem. You know? So. So, uh, and then when you get married, then, that, then, then you end up like me and Boyan and Dimitri. And, and it's, it's, it's a blessing. You know, you are being shaped into glory of God. So, uh, waiting is a problem. You know, uh, you have a meeting, you call your friends. You say, let's meet at, at uh, I don't know, at five. Everybody is there at five. And you as a king, you come like five and ten minutes after, right? Yeah. Because you don't like to wait, so you make others to wait. You know, it's kind of like cool when they are waiting and you are coming. But it's not pleasant to be waiting. You know, you look at watch, the bus is not coming. The person is not coming. The wedding is not coming. You know, uh, the salary is not coming. Uh, plata. You know, uh, so waiting is a pain. You know, it can be pain. And this is how I was growing up. You know, and then, then uh, you meet God. You know, and, and you, you want to help Him. You know, uh, let's, uh, God, let's do things, right? Because God, I, I got this idea and I got all energy and let's do things, God. And then it can happen, you know. Uh, last time we spoke about the Moses a little bit. And how he led people to the Red Sea. And when he brought them there, you know, in uh, Exodus 14, verse 13, yeah, 14, 13, yeah, Moses said unto the people, fear not, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which I will show you today. And this is, this is the worst part that can ever happen to a natural man. You know, you are standing in front of the Red Sea, you cannot go forward. You look backward, there is an Egyptian army with, with the horses and the chariots. You know, the dust is like going up as they are chasing you. It's like, God, 
We have to do something. You know, God, I have to do something. God says, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Stand still. Wait. Do zero. Nothing. Ninch. Nishta. How do you say zero in French? Zero. Zero. <laughs> well, it was easy. How do you say nothing in French? Real. Real? Real. <laughs> okay, did you hear it? Yeah. Nothing. But God, you don't understand the situation. Don't you see that it's about my life? They are coming to kill me. And my family also. And I have to protect my family. Right? God says, just stand still. That's amazing. Now the salvation is in the hands of the Lord. You do nothing, you just watch. Now you have to trust God, He will do something. Well, but what if God doesn't do something? Maybe we should, we should dig some holes in the ground, put the stones, get some weapons, you know. In a case God doesn't work, then we can protect ourselves, right? Yeah. And God says, no, just wait. What? Wait? Me? Who never waited for anybody? And everybody was waiting for him. God, you, you don't know the feeling when everybody's waiting and I'm coming there. And now I should be waiting. It's very humbling. And it speaks about one thing. It speaks about trust in God. Stand still. Maybe you've seen this video from a, a class of a, a physics. You know, there is a string and there is a big heavy ball. Yeah, yeah, and and the, yeah, yeah, and the guy takes it to his to his chin, and then he lets it go, so it it swings over there, and then it swings back. And now the question: Is it going to hit his face? Yeah. If you understand and trust the physics, you know it will come back to the same spot, never more, maybe less, you know. But if you start panicking, if you start panicking, you know, you move a little bit and you get hit by it. Stand still. You know, the, the danger is coming. It might be right in front of your face. And God says, give it into my hands. Give it into my hands. And wait. You know, some, some cultures are fine with waiting, you know. You know, like, oh, you know, we, we were in Ghana. You know, and, and we wanted to meet somebody he was interested in Christianity. We met somebody who was interested in Christianity. So we said, let's meet tomorrow again. And he said, yes, tomorrow. We said, here. And he said, here. And we said, when? And he said, tomorrow. He said, okay, but when? And he said, tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, like 9 o'clock, 10, 12. <laughs> and he said, yes. <laughs> I was like, you mean, you mean at 9 or at 12? <laughs> at, at 9 or 12, you choose. <laughs> and he says, yes. 
Does it sound like Serbs? You know, you ask somebody, hey, should I come over at 5 or at 7? And they say, yes. No. The guy was waiting there. He was there from, I know, 8. And if you come at 9 or 12, it doesn't matter. You know, you, you come there to a uh, Trotro bus station. Trotro. It's like little buses. You know, and, and you say, I want to go with this bus to another city. And they say, yes. And you say, so when is it leaving? No, you ask, when is it leaving? What time? And they say, yes. And what do you mean? What time is it leaving? What time should I come to get on the bus? And you say, just come. Any time you want. Because when the bus is filled, the bus leaves. And then there is another one. So when you come, you just come. It's not like Germany. Very precise. You know, you come to bus station. You know, it tells you bus comes in one minute. In one minute. Zaminu. Yeah, yeah. And you look and yes, you know. And then you look and the bus is really coming. It's everything precise. But with God, it's more like Africa than like Germany. Life with God is more similar to life in Ghana than in Germany. You know, you just wait on God. You just wait for God. Because God wants us to learn trust in Him. You know, it's like uh, being pregnant. Now all men understand what I am talking about. Right? You know, you know it's coming. But when? Just wait. Well, you don't know. The doctor gives you the date. You know what? The doctor knows nothing. The doctor doesn't know. Yeah. You just wait for the time. You know, and when it comes, the baby comes. And your life is upside down. So waiting with God is, is very interesting. And uh, it's very important. Now in the second Samuel chapter six. And uh, here is a story of a Ark of Covenant. And the Ark of Covenant is representing the presence of God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yes. And the Ark was lost for a very long time. And in the chapter 6, you know, we can read that the David is bringing the Ark back. And... Uh, here we can read it. Uh, verse 2. And David rose up and went with all the people that were with him. From Bale of Judah to bring up from there the Ark of God. whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwells between the cherubims. Yeah. Uh, the Lord of hosts that dwells between the cherubims. I repeated the, the verse. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, how is the ark called? You know, it's called by the God who is dwelling between the cherubims. Uh -huh. If you've ever studied the Ark of Covenant, it has two cherubims. And what's between the two cherubims? What's there? Do you remember? There's a blood. The blood of animals, the blood of the lamb. That's, that's uh, the sacrifice. And that's where God dwells. Uh -huh. If we want to meet God, if we, yeah, we have to come to the temple through the priest. And the priest is bringing the blood of animals once a year. Uh, right to the uh, Ark of Covenant. And there is forgiveness. God is dwelling in the place of forgiveness. When we want to meet God, we are meeting Him in the place of forgiveness. This is an amazing place to meet God. And it says here that they that they uh, put the the ark on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abina Dab. Now, what's wrong about this picture? The Levites are supposed to carry the ark on their shoulders. Here, David is bringing the ark on a cart. You know, I know his heart. I know he was excited. I know he wanted to do things for God. There is the ark. Let's move it back to Jerusalem, the presence of God. You know, the, the Levites and waiting for them and they carry it on the shoulders and, and, and I don't want to wait. Let's put the ark on the cart and let's bring it to Jerusalem. You know, many times we want to do things with our own idea. And we don't understand that God, God has his ways and his timing. So what happened here? So they drove the cart. They were pulling the cart with the ark. Yeah. Uh, verse 5, And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord. And it says in verse 6, And when they came to Nahon's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. Now the oxen are pulling the cart. The oxen are pulling the cart. Volovi. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, and the cart is like sliding or the, the oxen were falling. You know, and the, and the ark is falling. So natural man now wants to help God. Oh, the presence of God is falling. You know, let's help with our hand. Let's help God with our hand. And he touches the ark and he dies. This is what happens when we try to help God in our own strength. 
when we are not really waiting for the ways of God. There is, there is another one who was not able to wait for God. The father of our faith. Abraham. You know, God told him you will have a son with Sarah. Well, he didn't want to wait and wait and wait. So he had a son with Hagar. Hagar. And we know the result. It's a fruit of the flesh. Not the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, uh, many times people, they don't have a peace with God. Many times people do not fellowship in the presence of God. And, and, and they are not able to wait for God. And then we put our hands into action. Then we have a legitimate son with Hagar. Ishmael. You know, then we touch the ark and we die. And it says that in verse 9, David was like very afraid. And he is so scared now. So he takes this ark and he puts it into the house of Obed Edom. Yeah, you know, there is some house. <laughs> Let's put it there. <laughs> Hello, this is King David. You know, we just brought this ark into your house. You keep it. <laughs> and maybe, you know, rather don't touch it because we had this accident. So just let you know. <laughs> you know maybe tell your kids when they run around, you know, not to touch it. You know, and David closes the door and leaves. And, and the ark is there, like, uh, uh, hidden for, like, three months. And Obed Edom is blessed by the presence of God. And his kids are running around the ark and they are blessed. You know, and, and he is so blessed. You know, the presence of God in our house is a blessing. And nobody dies. People die when they are carnal. The carnal man is dying. But the presence of God itself is a blessing. You know, I can imagine they have it in, in the house. You know, and they sit around the table. And they eat some soup. <laughs> looking at the ark, you know. You know, it's there. <clears throat> and then one of the kids says, Mommy, can I tonight sleep between two cherubims? <laughs> you know, and mommy says, no, you were sleeping there last night. Now your younger daughter will sleep there. You know, I, th I think they had an amazing time with the ark. They were not afraid of it. You know why I believe it? Because uh, there was another one who was sleeping by the ark of God. Uh, uh, ark of God. Uh, uh, you remember uh, there was a uh, there was a little Samuel yeah he was given uh, to the priest and it says there that he was sleeping where the ark was in the presence of God you know God wants people to be in his presence you know, that's why the whale was ripped apart and now we have an entrance into the presence of God. You know, 
You know, they were living in this already in the Old Testament because they were understanding the heart of God. And uh, uh, Obed Edom is blessed, and David is like, wow, man, maybe we should bring the ark back again. So, uh, verse 12, uh, so David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed Edom into the city of David with gladness. Yeah, and there was like a, a big celebration, big shouting, you know, because of the presence of God. You know, when, when God comes into your house, there is rejoicing. When the forgiveness comes into your house, there is rejoicing. When you know that you are forgiven, there is, forgi uh, there is rejoicing. You know, when, when you forgive to somebody, there is rejoicing. You know, like, it's gone, it's okay. Let's rejoice. You know, Wilbert, I forgive you. You see, he's rejoicing now. You know? And he knows what I'm talking about. You know? You know? He owns me hundreds of euros. You know? No, I'm joking, I'm joking. So, the forgiveness and the presence of God is a blessing. And then in the verse 23, you know, uh, when you read the passage, you read that uh, Mikael, the daughter of Saul, didn't like it, so she had uh, no child until the day of her death. She didn't like the joy of the presence of God. And we said it speaks about forgiveness. Because God is meeting people from between two cherubims. You know, some people don't like forgiveness. The Pharisees. They were so angry when Jesus forgave sins to somebody. You know, some people don't like it when, when you are forgiven. Because you don't deserve it. You know, and it says here she didn't like it. And she was childless. You know, it means a curse in the Old Testament. And, and basically she had no fruit of her womb. You know, Christians who are carnal, they listen. Uh -huh. They want to help God and, and they touch it and they die. Christians who do not like forgiveness, you know, or people who rejoice from forgiveness, they will have no fruit in their life. You know, and I've met many Christians like this. You know, it's, it's all about works. You know, and I don't smoke, and I, I don't do this, and I'm better. Uh, once we had the baptism, we, we, we baptized one, one man. You know, and he had a tattoo of a pentagram on his arm. Because of his past. He was the devil worshipper. And then he believed and, and, and uh, you know, he came to church, started to go to church. And he wanted to be baptized. You know, it was such a joy. He was born again, saved and baptized. You know, and I baptized him with uh, Pastor Peter from Czech. And somebody came to us. And he said, 
That's no good. That's no good. Did you see the pentagram? Yeah. Some people don't like redemption and forgiveness. These people will have no fruit in their life. And I, I'm so sorry for them. And, and then the story develops really amazingly. The story continues. Then in the chapter 7, you know, uh, the King David realizes something. Verse 2, and the king said unto Nathan the prophet, See now, I live in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells within curtains, in a tent. He thinks and he comes with idea, maybe I should do something for God. Let's build a house for God. Let's build a house for God. Isn't it funny when we read Matthew 16, when Jesus says, I will build my church. Not you. Not him. Not them. I will build my church. I will build my house. And the same thing he says to David. You know, uh, he says uh, in, the, in the verse 5, Shall you build me a house that I may dwell in? You know, and then, then in the verse 11, the prophet comes to David and he says, Also the Lord tells you that he will make you a house. Yeah the, yeah, the last part of the verse. And also the Lord tells you that he will make you a house. Uh, second, 11. Yeah, cause the rest from your enemies. And also the Lord tells you that he will make you a house. Yeah, it's a God who builds the house. And then we can we can read in the, in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 6. You don't have to turn there. You know, uh, it says that we are the temple of God. Now, when you are connecting the dots, you see that God is building his temple. God is building his church. And how is he doing it? From inside, from the heart, and and uh, the story goes when they were building the temple. You know, in the first uh, Kings chapter six, because God says to David, uh, the your son Solomon will bring it to happen that I build a house. Mm -hmm. And uh, 1 Kings 6, verse 7, And when the house of the Lord was built, uh, it was built of a stone made ready before it was brought inside, so that there was neither hammer nor axe nor any tool of iron heard in the house while it was in building. Mm -hmm. And if you if you look at the archaeology, the temple was built in the Mount Moriah. That's where Jesus was crucified. The Mount Moriah where Abraham sacrificed his son and where the lamb was sacrificed. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and where the lamb was sacrificed instead. It's all the same place. And, and archaeology says that inside the mountain, you can go to Jerusalem and see it there. You know, uh, there, is a, there is a place when they are cutting the stones. You know, they were digging the stones and cutting them inside the mountain. And then, when the stone was ready, they brought it up into the temple. That's how God builds his temple. That's how God builds his church. Listen, we don't have to put our hands on it. God is building inside the mountain. You know, God is working in our hearts. Maybe you don't see it. Maybe you don't hear the hammer or chisel or axe in a boyan's life. But God is working there. Nobody hears it. Nobody sees it. But then we see the result. He is building his church. That's why we are preaching God. That's why we speak about the presence of God and forgiveness of God. And God is building his church. You don't hear it. But if I would put the mic on my heart, God is working. You know, in somebody's hearts, God has to use dynamite. Should I put a mic on, on, on your heart? Did we hear it? <laughs> the explosion, you know. God is working there. And we know it. He's cutting. He's chiseling. He's polishing. He's working. He is working. And you, you just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He will do it. You know, don't touch the God's presence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be careful, you know. <laughs> you know. No, we don't touch the God's presence. But on the other hand, in His forgiveness, I believe the kids of Obed-Edom as well as little Samuel I believe they were sleeping like right next to the ark. Maybe even between the cherubims. Because the whale is open. God's arms are open wide. And we can come into peace the very God's presence where there is forgiveness and there is healing and God says I know God says I know and I know that you know and I know that nobody else knows but don't worry I don't remember it it's forgiven you know it's gone and he's working and he's working. And we are beautiful temple. We are the beautiful temple. The Holy Spirit lives in us. You know, and the first Peter uh, two five uh, says that we are uh, the spiritual house. You know, God is building his church from within the mountain. So, uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, 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 don't be afraid of the work of God. You know, sometimes you think nothing is happening. I just have to wait and wait. But God is working. And He's doing beautiful work. So, let's come into the presence of God.
And uh, uh, I know God will do some cutting in your life. Yeah. And next time when I see you, you will be better. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just joking. But, but God is faithful. You know, I'll, I'll be better next time. I promise. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, dear Jesus, thank you for your work. Thank you for your salvation. And thank you that you are building your house. You know, we are the uh, house for the Holy Spirit. We are the spiritual house. We are the lively stones in the First Peter 2.5. Oh, yeah. Thank you, God. Uh, we pray, give us a, a, a house for the church. Yeah, give us, give us a place that we can meet. You know, for your glory. You know, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. And... Uh, uh, we have a, we have a, uh, there is a box in the end. Uh, I'll try to make it funny. I know if you've ever seen this box ever before. You know, so uh, if you've never seen it before, I, I'll tell you what is it for. And if you know what it is, hallelujah, you know, uh, stay faithful. You know, we are renting this place. So, uh, uh, just be blessed. You know, and uh, and uh, that's it. Amen. And uh, now we have a few more minutes, so uh, we can just have a short debate before we pack and, and go, go down. Okay. Amen. Thank you.